Well, hello and welcome to another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. And this time round, we've got something to celebrate because this is our 50th video. Um, and uh, we've just been overwhelmed with the response of people uh, to this channel. It's been quite staggering. It happened sort of by accident, really. Uh, Harry Metcalf, we rebuilt his Espada engine and we're now doing his Countach gearbox for him. But it just fell into it, really. He brought his car in. He said, do you mind if we make some videos? I said, no, that'd be great. Never thinking it would lead here. But here we are, and it's amazing how things have come full circle. Um, I want to do say thank you to everybody for the overwhelming support. We had uh, a million views last month of the channel, and we're up to 127,000 odd subscribers in 50 videos, which is phenomenal. Um, and this, strangely enough, uh, has come full circle, and to use a very big word, this is a propitious moment, really. This is the yellow Miura. It, was, it started life in yellow, in this colour, and it was the very first car that we featured on the first Tyrrell's Classic Workshop video. And it was sold at RM Auctions in London in October uh, 2019 for £1.25 million. This is very much in the public domain, at the time, it was sort of toted as being this very untouched car, which it largely is, but it further scrutiny when we got it in the workshop and started stripping it revealed that almost every panel had had a bit of a blow-in or a repair or something somewhere. And the gentleman who has bought the car and commissioned us to restore it, we had a consultation with him and we said, this is really beyond original now. Net result, it's had a bare metal respray, and here we have this beautiful beast return now. Craig's preparing the all original interior to go back in it, which was probably the reason why we were commissioned to do the project in the first place. A lot of companies would have said, no, rip the interior out. It doesn't matter the fact that it's original and fantastic. We want to charge you for doing a full retrim and it'll be better than original. Well, not really. Um, we don't work that way. We've got more than enough work on. We actually would prefer to go to the trouble of preserving the original interior. And that's what we're doing. And Craig's done a phenomenal job, the trimmer here, our trimmer. He's actually taken even the glued down carpets out without damaging them, which is nigh on impossible, because sometimes bits of the carpet are left behind. But no, he's managed to retrieve the whole lot. So we're gonna put it back in the car. And um, Tony has done a marvelous job of uh, repainting this car. It's taken far longer than normal than we normally would because of the delights of the pandemic and one thing or another. Nothing is happening terribly quickly in the world at the moment, and this is no exception. But we've got the car. We're starting to uh, build up the suspension on it and put it back together. And uh, I'm absolutely delighted with this. It's the original Bertoni Giallo. We, of course, mixed the colour 100% precisely right and uh, all the panel alignments, etc., are at least as good as they were, but not super tight like a six-month-old Audi. It's all very sympathetically done, and uh, we're actually going to start building this car up in earnest now, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll chart its progress as we go, but um, here we are, 50th video, this car's back in the workshop after having been stripped and painted, etc. Well, here we have the... Uh, the beautiful beast that is the engine from the yellow Miura. It's the original matching numbers engine. And our uh, friends in California, CP Carrillo, have made a new set of pistons. All the bores have been uh, bored out to exact specification to match. And we're slowly building the engine back up. We're awaiting a new set of special camshafts to be custom made for it, which will be here very shortly and then we can put the heads on and this will be ready to drop in. The gearbox has already been rebuilt and as I've explained before, this is one of the few engines where the cylinder block, gearbox and differential housing are all one casting. Uh, I would not have liked the responsibility of being the last person to have taken a machining surface off on this. Can you imagine if you got it wrong? doesn't bear thinking about. But um, anyway, it's looking beautiful. It's going to work beautiful. So um, yeah, we're well on the way with this project now. Well on the way. Well, the other car that is now finished is this beauty. This is the second prototype 
Uraco silhouette. They only made uh, 54 or 52 of them, depending on who you believe. But this car is the second prototype, probably the oldest surviving silhouette in the world of the 50 odd. And we grappled with decisions around this car as to whether to replicate all the the faults that Bertoni built into the interior at the time, unwittingly a lot of it. And, and we decided we did do that because this is a one-off special show car and show cars are normally cobbled together in super quick time on a very low budget. And this car was no exception. This was um, one of Lamborghini's sort of get out of horrendous financial circumstances uh, cards in the 1970s, but it's been returned to its original white, which is Bertoni Bianco at the risk of stating the obvious. But the colour it came in with was a sort of off-whitey colour, but it looks much better. Uh, it looks stunning in its original, back to its original white. Ryan's done a lovely job of painting this. And Craig has redone the interior. As I say, we deliberated over this. He's redone a lot of the interior and it looks just great now uh, compared to what it did. So um, this one's ready to go out and uh, it'll be back with its uh, owner very soon. Well, another car that we've got here at the moment is um, quite a curio these days. It's this car, it's an S-Type Jaguar 3.8 manual overdrive, which is essentially a Jaguar Mark II saloon with an extended back end, bigger boot, and the independent rear suspension, which came out on the E-Type in 1961, instead of the live rear axle on the Mark II. And this is a beautifully well-preserved original car. It has had restoration work at some point, but it's a lovely original patinated car and the interior is the original from 1968. So I'm going to have a look at the interior with Craig and see what he's doing because he's just bringing it back to life without changing anything externally. Well, here we are in Craig's little domain again and you look as though you're working on it. Don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> well, edit that bit out. Uh, <laughs> no offence intended. Um, yeah, so these are the seats out of the S-Type Jaguar. And um, you've been just rejuvenated. Well, I say just. Oh dear, I am doing well, aren't I? <laughs> you've been rejuvenating them very skillfully. Uh -uh. Um, so what, what have you been doing? I mean, yeah, it's, it's made up of these springs, isn't it? Like yes, a mattress. yeah. So the foam had sort of collapsed quite a lot. So... I took the cover off, steamed the foam to release it because it had been squashed and, and it was creased. And um, I've redressed the foam underneath it, put some uh, sort of a scrim foam oh, topper on. Yes. And I've also put um, a thin layer of mohair in between the springs and the, um, and the foam. So the springs aren't going into the foam, so there's more ah. sort of stability there, yes. Okay. Um... And, I mean, and then just re-trimming it again, you know, but putting right. it back into place. So. And this is the original leather from 1968. Yeah, it looks great, doesn't it? Connolly leather. It's fabulous. Yeah. And obviously what happens is the foam underneath assumes a crease. Yes, yeah. And then the leather imitates it, yes, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. So, so. But as you've put the new foam in... It should, it should bring the leather back into shape? Well, yes. Yeah, you've got the creases which are there where yeah. it's worn, but... It, the, I, I've worked on both of them, so we've got no, <laughs> yeah, no, no before, before and after. Yeah, sure. So, but they were quite wanting right. before. And what's yeah. this bit of red vinyl for here, Craig? Um, where the uh, <clears throat> where the skirt has started to rip, and where the where the um, where the fixings were fixed onto the bottom of the sort of cage, I've put that behind it, so it's got a bit more stability when I'm pulling it and right. re and re-trimming it really, so you won't see it, but right. it's, it's just grabbing a little bit better. Right. I mean, these are completely sort of virgin, untreated, untouched yeah. leather seats from 54 years ago. Yeah, they're great. Incredible. No, no. They're really nice seats, uh, And it's yeah. just given them a new lease of life. They yes, look just yeah. beautiful. Even, even still, if you bottle that, yes, you make know, a fortune. Yeah. They still look beautiful, so um, yeah. They may have had a misting of conolizing at some stage in the past. I can see a bit of red overspray there actually yeah, on the seat frame. Right, yeah. But uh, I mean, it is minimal. It, that's still the original Connolly leather. And uh, that, that's fabulous. He's going to be delighted with that. Now they it look just great, gives them a yeah. whole lease of life. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs>
Okay, well, uh, right, thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Keep on, <laughs> keep on looking as though you're working. <laughs> uh, well, here is aforementioned uh, object, or well, close to it. This is an engine, not a gearbox. The more astute amongst you may have noticed that. This is the engine out of Harry's Countach, the Quattro Volvo Countach engine, the ultimate iteration of the Countach engine, significantly more powerful than the early four and five litre Countach V12s. These cylinder heads were designed by Giulio Alfieri, uh, previously of Maserati, um, who was also Gian Paolo Dallara's cousin, uh, the brilliant engineer who I had the pleasure of meeting several videos ago. And at the time when Giulio Alfieri um, made these cylinder heads, when he designed them to uh, go on the, the, the uh, five litre block, they were the most thermodynamically efficient petrol engine in the world in terms of what you got power-wise for fuel. So, yeah, great piece of work. Uh, very hardy engine. But um, what we did with this engine, we're stripping the gearbox at the moment, but um, we actually had it dry ice blasted. We had Julian and Mara came up for the day and blasted this with dry ice and got rid of all the crud that was on it and uh, got some footage of that we're going to show you but uh, it's come up really well i mean this is quite a rough cast the sump and block so they're never going to come up beautifully well there's been a repair done here at some point in the past it's probably the usual cause for something like that is something inside the clutch letting go a bolt head breaking off or something and then getting chewed up by the flywheel rather nicely it's not serious it's been beautifully repaired end of story we're going to be scrutinising this more carefully. Um, interesting to see how the engine mountings have gone misshapen, simply with the weight and the torque and the power that's going through them. And they're not particularly substantial compared to a modern engine mounting, that, of an Audi or something that would cope with that sort of power and torque. And again, these were way over Lamborghini's advertised power at the time. They deliberately downplayed it as a lot of 1960s uh, American car uh, manufacturers did so that people could get insured on them because if nobody could get insured they wouldn't sell any. So um, these were quite underrated at the time. They were rated at 455 brake horsepower, if my memory serves me correctly, but the carburetor ones such as this actually developed quite a lot more than that. But Lamborghini didn't tell anybody because they wanted to keep something in reserve to see how Ferrari developed the Testarossa. So it's quite useful to add 30 brake horsepower if your rival has done the same, to have that up your sleeve. All politics and smoke and mirrors. Anyway, drive comes out of the engine, goes into the gearbox here, steps down, and then comes back through this huge sump casting here to the differential, which goes out to the wheels here. And of course, when you're sat in the car, your head is about there in the passenger compartment. Um, same, same layout, very similar as um, the Bugatti Chiron that Harry came up to visit us in, actually. The dry ice blasting is a very interesting bit of technology. It hasn't been around for too long, and it does work very well. This wasn't fantastically dirty, this engine, I have to say, but the results are very, very good, and it looks great. It really does. So um, I'm sure happy, Harry's going to be very happy with this, next time he visits us, which I'm sure will be in the very near future. And here we are in beautiful sunny Britain on this uh, lovely day at the airfield. And I'm joined by Julian from JTEC Auto Limited. Hi there. Um, and Julian's come all the way from Bristol, bless yeah. him, um, right. to do some dry ice blasting of Harry's engine and gearbox. Uh, yeah. So, now, obviously, um, as far as I'm concerned, dry ice blasting's a bit of a black art. Yeah. Um, how long has it been around now? It's, it's been around a long time, but it's only the last couple of years it's actually been involved with the car industry. Right. And the results are spectacular, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yeah. So no pressure. Not, not too much. <laughs> um, I mean, we have sort of given Harry's engine a cursory clean, which we shouldn't have done, because this was arranged before you kindly offered yeah, to come and do this. So we, we sort of set you a bit of a, um, a task, but I'd be interested to see, because obviously we've got the black critical paint here on the, the cam covers, um, and the bare alloy everywhere else, and a few plated items. But um, 
let's see, let's let's start to explore. Uh, I've had a word with Harry, and he's very happy for this to happen. Um, you're going to do the Countach engine compartment as well. Yes. We've done a little bit of scraping in there, but yeah. I think that will probably, dare I say it, the results will probably be no, more noticeable than they will on the engine. Because so, yeah. yeah. um, these weren't terribly bright cast. We've got different grades of aluminium here. There's that one there, and I reckon that's probably got more silicon in it. Um, LM8, it's called. Uh, casting material for the block. Um, but anyway, um, we'll, uh, and it's also the pressure's involved. It's quite, it's quite. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be cleaning um, about four bar. Right. Um, today. Um, well, that's 60 PSI in old money, isn't it? Which is a reasonable pressure. So you've got to be careful, haven't you? Otherwise you can, as I say, you start to take pain So off. yeah, the, the thing with this, we need to be careful if any of this is loose. If any of the paint is loose, then it will uh, lift it. Right. Uh, so obviously there are a few little yes. uh, cracks there. Yeah. Um, I need to be careful. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, and it's still got the likes of the starter motor on here. Is that okay? That's that fine, yes. It's, it's fine with the electrical components. Right, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. This is, uh, it's a win-win thing, isn't it, really? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm doing your advertising yeah. for you here. <laughs> But um, okay, well let's get to work yeah. then before uh, rain stops yeah. playing. Okay, we'll get set up and uh, see how it works. This is the secret substance. Can yeah. I touch this? I wouldn't actually. Oh really? You could put this glove on. It's, it's minus 79 degrees C. Oh, I'll, t I'll take your word so, for it. I can see yeah. it's smoking there. So basically, the way this works is a combination of the coldness of the dry ice, which is minus 79 as I've seen. I basically fire it at high speed with um, um, high pressure compressed air. Right. And then, okay, my machine will I sort of grind this into little uh, granules, okay. and then when it hits the surface, it immediately um, uh, sort of vaporizes into the air, and, and sort of what happens, it sort of creates an explosion, okay, like a mini explosion to lift the dirt off the surface. Wow. And that's how it works. Clever stuff, hey? How do you keep this at minus 79 degrees C? It, it keeps itself. Really? Yeah. And dry ice is basically pure carbon dioxide, it isn't is, it? Yeah, it's, it's a carbon dioxide snow that's been um, squeezed through you know, like, you know, like a dye. And they form this, you know, this balance. Amazing. They're relatively soft, you know, I can, I can do that with my fingers. And right. That's part of the power of dry ice. It really isn't going to damage the metal or the paint with it. It's cleaner. Fascinating. Well, wow, that's wonderful. Okay, well let's have a look at the engine and gearbox and uh, okay. see what results you've had with those. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, well, here we are in the ranch and uh, admiring your handiwork. And this looks absolutely It's come out brilliant. well, yeah. I'm very it pleased. really does. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it looks, looks just great. I mean, uh, it's, it was never going to come up like a mirror finish because it's quite a rough sand casting yeah. this. texture. Yeah, sort of yeah. I mean, even the cylinder heads are a different texture. They're smoother. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very, very interesting. Um, Italian, Italian foundry work is, is, is very good, but also quite interesting, really. 
And, and you've done the gearbox as well, and that's yeah, come up. Yeah, we gave that a blast, yep. That's come up beautifully. It's come up quite well, yeah. Uh, are you happy with the results? I'm very happy, yeah. I mean, considering the age of the car, it's, it's come up very well. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's surprisingly, uh, I saw the amount of surface area on this, on this engine. It's quite, it's quite fast, really. Yes. The biggest indeed. engine, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, no, that's uh, that's great. I'm sure Harry is going to be absolutely oh, I hope so. delighted with yeah. that. Um, well, I hope this has proved an interesting insight into uh, into dry ice blasting. Uh, so thanks for, to Julian for coming all this yeah, way, and um, we'll uh, we'll see how uh, see how Harry likes it when he sees it. Well, that concludes another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. Uh, here's to the next 127,000 subscribers and 50 videos. We'll be back with something else very soon.